This is the fuel sediment filter part of the fuel system. You want to clean that screen regularly at least once a year. This is the fuel shutoff. It will shut the fuel off and then you can pull that screen or unscrew the, the bowl and clean the screen and put it back together. These are the fuel filters. When you change the fuel filters you will put them on dry and leave the key switch in the run position and the pump on top of this filter will fill the filters and then it will start back up. This is the engine oil filter. When you crack this cap it opens up a valve in the bottom of this and it will drain out when you drain your oil so that you don't when you pull your filter it's not full of oil and then this is the engine oil fill. Engine air filter there are two filters inside here a primary and a secondary should be changed annually. The engine gear case dipstick just like pulling the dipstick on the engine it indicates a level and here is the hydraulic oil level that should be checked with the feeder house or if you have a header attached with the header on the ground. This is the coolant level overflow tank. That is where you set your coolant level, not here. That is the top of the radiator, but that is 100% fill. The level is maintained back here. This is the dipstick for the rotor gear case oil. It screws out and that is also the fill point to add oil. The drain valve is right there where that red cap is. The screw in the center is what you open up to drain the rotor gear case if you need to change the oil. And there is an adjustment here for the rotor drive, the rotary screen drive belt. Same thing, there's a tensioner gauge and a washer to make your adjustment. This is your Behind the rotary screen is your hydraulic cooler, your hydrostat cooler, your AC condenser. That all needs to be clean and this all pivots out. And this is the radiator and that's the after cooler for the turbocharger system. Need to be clean, make for a happier engine. There's a, there's a bearing right here in the, in the propeller. That is a replaceable bearing if these things these propellers actually help break up the trash to go through the radiator and if the bearings out they can stop moving but there's three bearings and then the rotary screen itself this has a vacuum duct that sucks everything off the screen if that vacuum duct is not adjusted properly this screen will plug up and it'll create a hot engine and there's the the tensioner system for the drive belt. This switch turns on the lighting for the engine compartment. That switch lights on, lights up your engine compartment lights. There's three of them and helps for night service. The rotor or the bin loading auger gearbox. This is the dipstick for the rotor or the bin loading auger gearbox. So same thing, it's a 85 140 oil and it's just an opportunity to check and make sure everything's good there okay this is the mass flow impact plate you want to make sure that the plastic is not does not have holes in it and it is firmly attached if it wears a hole in it it changes how the grain moves this plate to make your yield and then you can see the top of the the bin loading gearbox where we were checking the oil earlier this is actually the bin loading gearbox. You want to make sure this hub is tight in here, not loose. And then these covers are adjustable. There's a low, a low setting and an upper setting. I always leave them in up. It might be a situation where you have a crop that bridges. If you were down, it would bridge. If you need to move it up or maybe for a small grain grass seed, perhaps you want them down three-quarter bin level sensor and if you feel it's too low I've mounted this sensor up in this area here so it doesn't go off so quick and then this is the sensor that tells you the bin is full adjustable so that's what does that job the bin loading auger can get very sharp the flooding will notch or start start wearing out and then it can wear the heads of the bolts out 
and this tube can get really thin. I've even seen it broke out in here. So check that out and make sure everything's good there and check your bearing to make sure it's all right. This is the grain tank auger front auger drain. This is the rear grain tank auger drain. Make sure those are open if you're washing the combine. Um, don't leave them open and go to the field. They'll run lots of grain out. This is where the vertical auger drain covers go. They're removed right now, but there's one on the front side with three bolts to hold it on, and then a rear one with two bolts to hold on. 